as we turn to scripture. The passage for today is from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 10 to 18. And my portion of uh, scripture that I'm going to speak from today is verse 16. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 10 onwards. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as shoes for your feet, having put on readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flames, flaming darts of the evil one, and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplications for all the saints. We just pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for your word. May the word, Lord, be like a sword, Lord, penetrating into our hearts, Lord, and help us respond to that marvelous love of yours, Father. Sanctify us with your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me just uh, uh, recollect, I think, a message given three or four years ago by Brother Rajat. On the whole passage, 10 verses, I've been just been given one verse. He asked a question, uh, I think it was January also. Uh, he asked, are we still reading our Bibles? You know, you start in the new year, we start reading the Bible. So are we all still there? And uh, when he said, if you haven't started, Chinese New Year is still there. <laughs> oh, by the way, Chinese New Year is also over now. <laughs> so... <laughs> The last time I stood here to preach, it was about history. Uh, it was about King Herod. And the, the time before that was about Joppa and Caesarea. And uh, Peter going to the house of the centurion. And today I'm speaking from the shield of faith. Uh, I think there is a title of a book somewhere, History, Geography and the Shield of Faith. If somebody has any, anything to write about it, please go ahead <laughs> and do that. There is a book uh, written many, many years ago, about 400 years ago. The Christian in Complete Armor, written by William Gurnall. It's about this passage. It's about 261 messages from the armor of God. Ten verses. John Newton, evangelist preacher, before said, if a Christian has to read a book after the Bible, this is the book that should be read. Let's just recap. So the armor of God and, and you can see a depiction of the, the armor. This is based at that time in antiquity, Rome ruled. And this is the typical armor that a Roman soldier would wear to battle. And if you can see there are three uh, pieces of armor as in the scripture it says that take up the whole armor of God. Okay, put on, put on the belt of truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness and put on the shoes, right? And we are going to talk about the shield of faith, okay? Let's just to recap that the Ephesian, uh, the city of Ephesus was a city in, in Asia Minor, in modern day Turkey, uh, center of commerce, center of uh, religion and probably of uh, education. And Paul spent a couple of years preaching there to the people at Ephesus. But this letter is written many years later from prison. Okay? Many years later from prison when he was at Rome. It can be divided into two halves. Chapter 1 to 3 about your inheritance in Christ. I will just read uh, this verse from chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is in the core of core at what we have, our inheritance in Christ. And verses 4 to 6, 
is our response how we should respond to what god has done for us please i urge you if you can read the book we, we i think it will be 2 3 4 weeks 6 weeks till the end of uh, uh, march i don't know where, till when but if you can read the book of ephesians it will be so so encouraging vishak said it's an open book it's for all believers it's amazing the first three chapters are amazing let me just turn to verse 10 and 11 of this passage verse 10 finally be strong in the lord and in the strength of his might put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil it says be strong wear and stand it's so it's it's something that god is telling us right always in this passage i see there is a preparedness there is the equipment okay and there is the enemy always in this if you see so let's just it's an invisible armor for an invisible battle we don't see it sometimes it 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 manifests physically right we don't see it but it is so uh, when i look at all of you we are all dressed up in our sunday best i hope right but this is the most threatening place on earth for the ruler of the earth we should actually be sitting with flak jackets and helmets because we are scheming against the enemy each week that you come in you're being prepared okay and we are being equipped to fight this battle and the battle is happening it's life you know the world and the system is controlled by the enemy and like you can see going to see in the in the verse verse that i'm going to see today that arrows are flying in at a more uh, what do you say a massive rate a huge rate than before assault on all fronts physical mental you know before uh, if if uh, a, a person had to be exposed to very very uh, you know uh, explicit stuff you had to probably go out to watch it now it's inside it's on your screen it's indoors and the threat that is faced by the new generations how can we control it how can we prevent it the answer lies in this passage this is the worst in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flames flaming darts of the eagle one it's some some passages say flaming arrows flaming missiles okay uh i'm just trying to divide this into three like i said the uh the preparation the equipment and the enemy uh some people say that you shouldn't talk too much about the enemy but this is how it looks the dart right the flaming dart I, i'm sure we would have all seen it the the what happens in a defensive formation now uh, i will talk about the shield when i talk about the equipment but the problem is the only way to attack a defensive roman army in the shield and when they stand in formation is by flaming arrows because they they stand with the shield it's a huge shield they stand with the shield and the person behind holds it you know above two three rows and behind them stand the archers to shoot so if they need to penetrate or defeat this force and they walk in in tandem in line okay imagine 10 20 people walking in line coming towards you with a shield they cannot penetrate them right they have to use the flaming arrows why when the arrows come fall behind you know it might burn you sorry it might burn you directly but it could your clothes could also catch fire and they become you you become an inferno that's the way that enemy could could you know get at you there so this is the <coughs> this is what the enemy uses let me just go to the cipher so enemy is he real he is real the battle is real he is a master manipulator jesus believed in him and i mean believed in him means he knows that that person is real he knows him from old of course he referred to him he spoke to him he cast judgment on him 
He has been active throughout human history ever since the fall and he rebelled against God. Coming to this passage, to know about the darts, the arrows. Genesis in chapter 2, I think it's verse 16, okay, and uh, 15 and 16. God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God said, uh, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 17, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Right? And when we go to the next chapter, verses 1 to 6, serpent in the form of, Satan in the form of serpent, comes to Eve and starts talking. Do you know what is the question that he asked her? Interesting, right? He said to the woman, this is uh, verse uh, 1, Did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Is that what God said? A mild twist. Huge difference. These are the darts that come at us. Doubts that are sown in our minds. And then Eve goes on to explain, not say, but what happened is, they accepted the challenge. Imagine, just putting ourselves in that situation. If you were in a place where God created everything, garden, fruits, trees, animals, everything for you, everything for you, and he says, don't eat of the fruit of, there were two trees, by the way, in the center, right? One was a tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if he tells you not to touch that tree, and somebody comes, imagine you're in the garden created by him, in all the situation created by him, right? Sustaining you, allowing you to live a life. And one question in a twisted format, and you decide to believe that and go ahead. Who do you depend on? Where does your dependence lie? Is it with God or with evil? Every time we sin, we're saying no to God and saying yes to the enemy. It's clear. He loves to snatch the word away. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 9, it's the parable of the sower, right? Soil near rocky ground, the birds come and pick it up, right? Sometimes it's false theology causes believers to doubt. Let me go back to an incident in my life. Uh, there are a couple of in in instances. Let me see, time permitting. I can elaborate. Uh, this was in the year 2000, before I came to Kuwait. I was working in Bombay uh, in a multi-speciality hospital, working in the coronary care unit, uh, uh, the luxury coronary care unit. Uh, the head nurse of that unit, Okay, na name sounds very Hindu, but then he went, oh, I'm Christian. So he started talking. Most of the others, I have, my assumption was she was a born again believer. Most of us, we started talking, tea breaks. You know, she's in the morning shift. Very nice lady, takes very good care of the stuff. So we started talking about scripture. But then when we started talking, I started realizing that she said, Jesus is not God. Okay? There is Jehovah, God, but Jesus is not God. Then I realized that there are the Unitarian faith, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses. So every day she will bring out some verses. Of course, their Bible, it's different. They have changed a lot of verses. So she will, few verses, I'll speak a few verses. Okay, so I have to go back to start now scrambling. So we're just dealing with Christians and talking about the faith of people who believe in Jesus. This has been going back and forth for a year and a bit. I think from 99, yes. So she keeps saying, so they, I think they, uh, when we talk about the Lord's Supper, I, th I think they do it only once a year. Like, like the Jews, you know. Once a year the high priest goes. So we, I think it was the time before, I think after I resigned or something like that. We were talking and then she said, we eat this once a year. Then I took out the passage from Corinthians. I said, let's, 
to it okay or and in the gospels both and when paul says about this says jesus said do this in remembrance of me this is the verse that i left left her with i do not know where she is now but these things happen i am just talking about in the broad christian umbrella what is happening forget about things outside you know country that we live in how it is there might be challenges closer to home few weeks back in the shepherd shop okay morning time on a weekday when i went there i saw this couple they came in very casually dressed they came in to buy some stuff and they they were talking so i got a phone call so i stepped out when i came back there was a good conversation going on between i will not name the person <laughs> he was he was sitting at the you know cashier still and they were talking back and forth and they were actually inviting him to go to their church okay saying that you know there's this anointing and there's a leader and an anointing it has to flow from anointed person to his spiritual son and that's the way if it doesn't happen that way it's not right you know there are anointed people each place so i walked in in between and they told okay you can join in the conversation i said no i'll listen so every time they're talking they're talking about this it's special things are happening in our church nothing is happening in your church okay so why don't you come and you know have a look uh, so then when it went on for some time of course the person didn't they he was talking to them in a very nice way very cordially talking about bible verses and and then um, you know i said can i ask one thing you said this sonship or spiritual mentorship or sonship is that equal to discipleship and they started saying no it's not that it comes after you know this sort of vacillating so i know what to i mean i'm i'm scrambling for bible verses you know it didn't come to me at that time but because i needed to say something that okay we have to read the whole bible the whole bible all these dots come in from inside from outside your children could come up with questions to you i remember at a time my parents didn't know that i almost became an atheist when i was in college it is only the grace of god that brought me through but at that time when you send your kids to college they will be exposed to all this all of this any country india wherever the battle is it's tough the darts are many flaming arrows sometimes we may not have answers keep praying the devil tempted jesus right in matthew chapter 4 you know the the script there i'm going a little fast because i i don't know whether i can keep time but i'm just <laughs> okay in chapter 4 where in the beginning jesus was led was led by the spirit to the desert to be tempted of the devil okay so what did the devil say if you are the son of god command these stones to be become loaves of bread so basically he was telling jesus that okay your father sent sent you here you're hungry what sort of a father is he yeah he tempted him there remember the israelites got tempted this in the desert right they asked for manna and uh, when god gave them manna they said we don't have food the food in egypt was much much better they were slaves right there is no water we are thirsty oh, oh you left us to die you brought us here to die they were slaves they preferred the captivity and eating whatever uh, they said leeks and i don't know whatever vegetables they were but they were fed with manna same question asked to jesus how did he reply to him man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god he said i will depend on my father for what needs to be done i just do not live by what i eat alone but from spiritual word from my father me and my father we are in communion again the devil took him to the holy city and set him to the pinnacle of the temple okay throw yourself down and 
you will have a soft landing right uh, i don't remember there was one uh, magician or something used to levitate and i forget his name okay on tv remember at one time is the rage right he used to levitate and float around ah david copperfield yes yes okay something like this right why you are the son of god you are the messiah show yourself have this huge you know event where you know you take a dive and then the angels will come and so they're by announcing and they're trying to show you the type of darts that come right the devil can quote scripture better than the best you and i may forget stuff but he will quote that's where we start you know that small seed of doubt again jesus said to him it is written you shall not put the lord your god to the test okay now started with food throw yourself off become popular next gave him the showed him the whole world very high mountain in all the kingdoms of the world let me tell you another incidents uh, evangelist preacher friend of mine bible teacher he he is part of an organization called jesus mission in india he said uh, one of his missionaries went to a conference in hyderabad and there was a preacher preaching pray to god and the christian should walk in the best cars and you should have the best houses and the biggest this and the biggest that and you should wear all this you know and after the meeting this uh, missionary went to the preacher and he told i have heard this message he said hey, have you attended any of my meetings before he said i heard this message before he said no i have not have you seen any of your video clips on youtube and he said no i haven't he said then where did you 2000 years ago the devil gave the same offer to jesus you shall worship the lord your god alone he loves to snatch the word away now coming to the equipment right the shield right this is this is not the small shield that you see in combat the movie gladiator hand to hand combat the small greek shield which you hold around your arm and put and you know you have your sword on your hand and you fight no this is called thurion in greek it's called thurion it's a huge shield probably covered in leather okay and it can it's about 4 and 1/2 feet high and 2 and 1/2 feet wide so when you stand you can actually you know stand behind it and get shielded from whatever attack is coming and it's sometimes coated with fire retardant oil or maybe dipped in water because they knew that the roman army was the superpower then there was nobody who could they crushed everybody in sight right and so they knew the, that the enemy you know they uh, probably the persians or the egyptians or whoever they would fire these fiery arrows so to defend against that they had this uh, how many of you have uh, read asterix and obelix comics yeah you've seen that roman formation right when they come in you know when obelix throw these uh, rocks and stuff at them right that shield and that formation yeah something like that they would do that when they were being attacked right so this is that shield right but it's a shield of faith right so this is equipment what is faith it's belief trust confidence in what in whom in whom jesus always have a verse always have a verse we all know it's jesus but the word of god right galatians 220 amazing uh, incident about this i was looking for a verse whole time of preparation they never was for this today morning woke up early praying went through the notes preparing preparing praying to god god give me a verse then i start started listening to a song by matt redman let my words be few yeah jesus i'm in so in love with you listen to the song couple of times they said okay i'm going to lie down for a bit i need to take rest and then uh, how many of you have the u version bible app right today's verse of the day verse 20 
God can speak to us through media. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This we remember. Right? This part we always remember. Okay? The next. And the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How do you get faith? Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Chinese New Year is over. I think the Indian, Indian New Year is coming sometime in April. So you can still hit the reboot bus button and start. Right? The word of God. The thief, John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. What does the thief steal? Tell me. Is it your money? What will devil do with your money? Is it your health? So what does he steal? How many of you have gone to Sunday school in um, uh, small age? When you were young? How many memory verses did we study? Many. How many of them do you remember? Sometimes, right? Not all the time, right? Okay, try to do that now. Try to learn. And how much do we remember? What is the devil stealing? Because this is the only thing that can keep you. Can preserve you. Can protect you. It says, take up, right? The shield. Take up the shield. Because you already have the breastplate and the belt, right? But you take up the shield because... In the armor, okay, the breastplate and the belt and the shoes are always on. It's only when the battle starts, you go and pick up the helmet, put it on the sword and, right? Not when they're in barracks. They'd be probably battle ready, but without these weapons. The devil always steals the word of God from you. So that you cannot be protected. Psalms 119.11 I have stored up your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. What is sin? Obeying the devil, going against God. Whatever it may be. Lust, anger, jealousy, gossip, whatever it may be. If you are there today, remember that you are following the wrong person. Devil is the father of lies. Now for the preparation. For the preparation, you have to read the whole book of Ephesians. <laughs> right? Above all, in all circumstances. Above all, or in all circumstances. What are the circumstances? A battle. Right? Invisible armor for an invisible battle. Right? Let's just go to 1 John 5, 4. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. We know where the power lies, right? In uh, Ephesians, the same passage says, Finally be strong in the Lord, in the Lord, and in the strength of His might. I'm, I'm going to conclude now, just reading a few pa verses, just to encourage you. The battle is hard, it's tough, it's brutal. You know that many people have fallen away in this walk with Christ. We hear of news every day. But to encourage you, let me just go through this verses. Second Corinthians 4, 7-9. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted, not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Verses 16 to 18, so we do not lose heart. 
though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen. Do you know what salvation is? Three aspects to it. Just introducing something in. Right? It's, it's woven in throughout the Bible. We are saved from the penalty of sin. Yes? That is justification. We are being saved from, from the power of sin. This is sanctification. It's ongoing. Ongoing. And we will one day be saved from the presence of sin. Glorification. Is it easy? Is the battle easy? It's not. A soldier cannot say that I have something at home. I need to go turn his back. Right? All of us sitting here are soldiers. God has commanded us to take a, pick up the armor, right? Ephesians chapter 3, 14 to 19. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. Even as you go today evening for the precious love, I just want to remind you that our victory is in Christ and He has already won the victory. It says stand, stay firm, firm in what? In the gospel of peace, right? Be standing, all you have to do is standing. The battle belongs to the Lord. But stand with the armor that God has given you. Stand with the armor that God has given you. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. May have the strength to comprehend. With all saints what is the breadth, length and height and depth. And to know the love of Christ that surpasses, surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So in all circumstances. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Read the word. Pray. Extinguishing is not an easy job. Has to be done. So let me conclude by praying that now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us to him be the glory in church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I hope that even as we conclude the series that you be at least we will learn these verses the armor of God and be strong standing strong take up the shield of faith stand strong we close our eyes can we pray if you can rise up Father God we thank you Lord for this day Lord Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the truth, being our righteousness, being a gospel of peace, where we have peace with God because of your sacrifice, Lord. Thank you for being our faith, the hope that we stand on. Thank you for being our salvation. Thank you for being our word that enrich in us, Lord. Even as we are today, Lord, when we go back home, Lord, guard us and keep us, Lord. Help us to depend on you and you alone, Lord. Not any other voice, not any other influence, Lord. Help us stand firm in you, in your strength and in your might, Lord. Never trusting anybody else or anything else, Lord. Help us look to you always, always, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way in us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.